Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Castlevania. Um, as promised, this is the cover of Nintendo Power that featured Simon Belmont. Um, not really, doesn't really look like him. A lot of red, as he has, but his blonde hair and helmet, you know, it looks more like the actual cover of the game does, which I guess makes more sense. But yeah, he's holding Dracula's decapitated head with the eyes still glowing. There's a skull over there, he's got the whip. But yeah, it's cool. 14 pages of gory details. Um. God, got the wrong buttons. Sitting the wrong things for a second there. I love, I've mentioned this before, but I really do love whips as a weapon. So we can see, by throwing holy water, th those are fake blocks. Oh, sweet Jesus. And as with the first game, those things aren't really offensive. They're mostly defensive, which is kind of interesting. I think we keep going this way. What do I have? I got 15. Oh, God. <laughs> Recently was just watching... Oh, brother. I was originally just watching a bunch of Family Feud. No real reason why, just because... Every time somebody has a miserable answer, they're always like, It's up there, Steve! And everyone around them claps, and they're like, Good answer! Good answer. It isn't. It never is. Invest in an Oak steak? We have not the money for it, sadly. One moment. So I think we're good. I've got the I've got the knife. Oh gosh. We're not good. I can't believe I was there like, alright, I think we're good. I've got the knife instead of the holy water. The knife is good for circumstances like that. I fell on the platform and it bounced me away. Wait, what do you mean, no? That's what they mean by no. It's not a it's not a pain to get back to where you are. But getting there with money is the issue. Sorry, I unpaused it and paused it and wasn't sure if I was recording right and then realized that I was in the middle of a fight and got scared and ran away. This is how I've been grinding. I just come up here and shoot stuff at things. But I've gotten really bad at doing the jumps down there. Actually, Oh my god, I'm one shy. Oh wait. Yes, perfect. Okay. But yes, so we have the silver knife to save our neck. It's not a bad weapon as things go. Though the issue with all Castlevania sub weapons is you must throw it by holding up. I'm I'm going to kill myself in the real world. <laughs> this is a bad start to the episode. One moment, everyone. All right. I don't have it. But I think I've had enough practice with these stupid jumps that I'm probably going to be able to do it this time. Anyway. Um, something I wanted to mention. So, for whatever reason, this was a thing in the NES era, I guess. Um, but the sequel to Zelda is the same thing. 
instead of both games featuring their normal like swapping protagonists, every Zelda features a new Link, every um, Castlevania features a new member of the Belmont line. Um, they both feature the same character as was in the first game. Which is just a little weird when you look back at them. But as another thing, they also um, both feature a weird side-scrolling sort of open world, sort of like the classic Metroid experience with um, Zelda having a th system similar to that, but being top-down, and Castlevania being a side-scroller without having any of the RPG mechanics. So it just kind of makes uh, it weird when the the fact that it happened twice, you know? Because honestly, the fact that a game in the NES era had a sequel that was kind of weird is not that crazy. But the fact that this kind of specific sequel happened twice for two of the NES's most iconic games ever is just very strange. Forty-three. I love how you just get a little too many sprites on the screen and the game just starts to chug. Hey, 51, we're good. So, um, in my earlier attempts, I wasted lives by attempting to save time by, like, jumping. But I jumped on things that could not actually save me time. Like, for instance, that, that thing over there is a pit. If I were to go this way and jump. Yeah, that's a pit. Jump whipping feels good. I think it removes some of the recovery on whipping. Alright. <laughs> I came at the worst possible time. Uh, I had promised that I had it. I had promised. All right. Um, but yeah, the thing that I wanted to get to is that... So something interesting that I learned about uh, Zelda 2 recently is... So that's a shortcut you can take. Interesting. Um, is that... So the names in the, of the towns in Zelda 2 are all named after... the sages from Ocarina of Time. But because of weird time shenanigans, that actually means that... Oh yeah, let's keep that on, huh? Give me your oak steak, you sycophant. What? I... So as it happens, it looks like sub-weapons still cost hearts to use. But we've got the oak steak now. I can get on with my life. Anyway. That's fine. It's fine. Doesn't matter. Just fills up my health, you know? It's like a health pack. So anyway, yeah. So in Zelda 2, um, all the towns are named things that... All the towns share names with sages in Ocarina of Time. But that is retroactively... That's retroactively a reference to Ocarina, I guess. Because Zelda 2 takes place at the end of the timeline, I believe it is, in fact, the last game in the Zelda timeline. Not that the Zelda timeline makes any sort of damn sense, but...
Yes. Um, it would make sense that all of these legendary figures would have towns named after them. I don't know why Link and Zelda don't have towns, but whatever. But the thing is, in Ocarina of Time, it would s it's the other way around. They were like, huh, what if we use the names of these towns as sages in this game? And, you know, not a lot of people remember uh, Zelda 2, and many of them do not remember it fondly. Bro. But, you know, they do have memory of it. What am I doing wrong here? Do I have to go back? One moment, checking my guide. Okay, I just checked. I'm going the right way. It's just that that jump is really annoying. Uh, Jason Graves, the person who made the video, spe speeds up this uh, moment in it. The person making the video guide that I'm using, that is speeds up this little moment uh, quite a bit, but you can actually see him attempting and failing to make the jump many times in hyperspeed. So good, at least I'm not suffering alone here. Uh, 75 experience, interesting. Oh yeah, so I noticed that there's actually four numbers on the heart counter. Oh god. It's like I'm trying to jump up the worst Tetris stack in history. Jeez, oh Pete. Also, yeah, we are still physically underneath the water. Neat, huh? Just checking for a wall checking. As I'm wont to do. Don't fuck with Belmonts. They will send their grandchildren to invade your home for generations. Cool. Oak steak. You now possess Dracula's heart. As you can tell by the little kidney bean thing. I don't think it actually does anything right now, though, but that's okay. Oh, sweet. But yeah, it's kind of interesting that they used the things from Zelda 2 in future Zeldas but didn't really give the same credit to Castlevania 2. Castlevania 2 does not, you know, get that kind of stuff. Granted, I don't know how they would use the things like, like, say, if it was just the same thing. Castlevania isn't really about, like, having four mystical sages that you go and rescue. It's more about, here's a whip, go into the castle and kill the guy with it, you know? Belmonts do two things, whipping and jumping. Like, I kept saying that while watching the anime with my wife, because Simon, you know, Nest Controller, he does two things. He whips and jumps. Trevor does not have people skills, as evidenced by the anime. Uh, he's lonely and sad. He's good at whipping and jumping. Those are the Belmont skills, you know? That's what they do. Oops. Having two sets of gear, I guess. Like, having a sub-weapon and a passive on is also really interesting. For the time, you know? Can I go back this way? Yes, I can. Neat. It is really annoying how this game just starts to chug at some moments. But yes, I would like to see more credit given to Castlevania 2. You know, there are multiple games that attempt to emulate Symphony of the Night or um, Castlevania 1. I would love to see more games do sim uh, Castlevania 2. But one moment, I'll check my guide again. Alright, yeah, we're done in the mansion. 
We have quite a walk ahead of us, though. Um, we have to walk to the other side of the game world. Yep. We have to walk all the way back to the first town, Jova. So, you know, that's cool. Bro. Alright, fine. That's fine. That's all good. Oh yeah, it's still night. Oh yeah, I learned that I missed something called a thorn whip, but it's not covered in any of the guides that I use. Well, it's covered in one of them, but not the main guides that I'm using. Um, the guide in question tells me to skip it, though, so... That's the only mention of it, and it's, don't use it. It's not worth it. Um, I will mention, though, on the topic of referencing Castlevania 2, one of the only games that actually does it, Rondo of Blood, or Chino Rondo, if you prefer. Uh... Chino Rondo, Rondo of Blood, is apparently one of the best Castlevania games ever. However, it was released to the Turbo Graphics, a console that I can't even name another game for. Like, if you were to ask me to name two games that came out on the Turbo Graphics, I would say Castlevania Rondo of Blood, and then I would throw a smoke bomb down and escape the awkward conversation that I'm in. I don't know what else came out on the Turbo Graphics. It's not like it has a lot of clout, like the NES does, for you know inventing a lot of tropes and stuff of the genre. I mean, Christ, my mom still calls consoles a Nintendo, even though like the primary console in her house growing up was made by a Sony, and in my house it was a uh, Microsoft Xbox 360. Did I go here? Yes, I did. It's the first mansion. That means that we're nearly to Jova. But yeah, with the turbo graphics, like, it doesn't really have that much of an impact. And like, to me, I mainly remember the turbo graphics as the thing that's trapping Rondo of Blood on it. I haven't been able to find a good ROM for Rondo of Blood that doesn't involve me downloading a TurboGrafx emulator. And I might have to buy the Legacy Collection that also contains Symphony of the Night, but god, how many times have we all bought Symphony of the Night? Right? I mean... Jeez, guys. I would love to see a scan of, like, most bought video games of all time. That's okay. Like, my wife has bought... My wife, together with her brother, my brother-in-law, have probably bought together, in total, probably about, like, 11 copies of Resident Evil 4 across all the different consoles that it was released on. Um... My good friend Robert has at least six copies... No, he has more than that. He has several copies of Devil May Cry 3, Dante's Awakening. Um, more if you include Special Edition, actually. Man. Something that is really annoying is that it is really, really difficult to play this game with the slowdown. Like, it doesn't feel good to play with slowdown. Oh god! Okay, do a regular drop. Then jump it. Look at me. I'm like a real boy. Woo! Pardon me, sir. Just 
to be out of your way. Okay, this is another uh, interesting gameplay decision in that it's interesting and I don't know if it's good. There is no way to avoid this. You must take this damage. So it's recommended that you equip and use the Laurel item, for it gives you temporarily invulnerability. And by the way, temporarily invulnerability in a Castlevania game is unheard of. Okay, so now, we equip Dracula's heart and talk to the boatman. Let me show you the way. So in Rondo of Blood, you actually do something like this. Um, in addition to returning to... Horrible not to have a curse, though. In addition to returning to Algeba, I believe, or Jova, it's one of the earlier towns. So you return to those towns in Rondo of Blood. It's the, the first level is set there. Which is interesting and cute. The whole thing is meant to be like a little nostalgia trip to um, all the other Castlevanias. Since it's the fifth one in the timeline. Or the fifth one released. The fifth real Castlevania. Um, but in addition to that, you also take that same ferryman. I assume it's a different guy because it's hundreds of years later, but... Uh, yeah, we're at another mansion. Right along. Um, I'll see you guys next time. I've been Alfred. This has been Castlevania 2. Thank you for coming. Uh, see you later.